Welcome back to The Mining Pod for this week's news roundup with Matt Kimmel of CoinShares. We, of course, are talking about Core Scientific issuing a notice that it might go bankrupt, not able to make payments for October and November. Then we're going to move over, talk about Maple Finance, interest in its new lending program, and wrap up with Block hiring Argo's former CTO. What is going on at Block? They're scooping up all the talent on the market. But Matt, how are you doing? Start off there. Always excellent. Let's let's get into it. I mean, box office moment for Bitcoin mining this week. We got all the, all the attention in the world on the industry. It's fun times. We do have a lot of attention. So let's just go through what we know so far about Core Scientific. Core Scientific is the largest North American publicly listed miner. It has about thirty x a hash, with about half of that being my, self mining, and then another half being hosted for other companies. Core Scientific has about 30 exahash online. It is the largest North American listed public miner. About half of that exahash is its own self-mining operation, and the other half is hosted for other companies. And now all of that could be crumbling down. We're not quite sure what this entails. Like Compute North, a few weeks ago, we saw that they went to Chapter 11, and those assets were put up for sale in some instances. In other instances, it still looks like Compute North is running them. Oftentimes, a Chapter 11 can mean that you're just restructuring the company. Sometimes it means that you're selling everything and the company will dissolve. We don't even know if they're in Chapter 11 yet as well. It's not been a filing for that. It's just a notice about their finances not being in order. And then they cannot make payments on their debt for October and November. Uh, Core Scientific's ticker did not respond well to any of this news. It's down about 80% on the week, and it's down below $0.20 cents, uh, per share this morning looking at Yahoo, which is incredibly rough. I think it's actually done worse than its SPAC number at this point, which is pretty tough. And they spac only in January of this year, so it's been, an, been about a 10-month run. In terms of their debt and finances, they have about $500 million in assets. Those assets might be a little pumped right now just based on uh, the assets being measured a few months ago and mining markets have definitely gone down. And then their uh, bills are also quite high, about a billion dollars. So there's some tough stuff going on with them. Matt, going to hand it over to you. Yeah, we've talked about, you've heard about minor capitulation for a while now. And we don't know if this is the moment of maximum pain yet, but we have to be close, right? The biggest hosting provider, the biggest self-miner, you said around 30 exahash or, you know, Somewhere around, I think, 15% of total hash rate right now. I mean, this is a behemoth in the mining industry, right? Um, and likely Chapter 11, right? Bankruptcy is around the corner. I think the story here, like digging into some of the numbers and some of their filings, it sort of seems to me like interest payments was a major factor here. You know, mining con- conditions to mine were really favorable. Right. And sort of the gold rush in last year and the high price and difficulty was not nearly as high as it was now. But it's only realized as favorable if the miners are selling their coins at that time. Right. And I think the strategy amongst a lot of the miners were to just raise a bunch of debt, operate that way, right? Finance their operations that way, um, and just huddle as much Bitcoin and expand as much hash rate as they possibly can. Um, But now, in a much more challenging environment, what we're seeing is selling their capital assets, machines, and selling their Bitcoin holdings in their treasuries to try to continue to op- to, to stay afloat. And um, that's, I think, the story with, with Core Scientific. They sold about, I think, around 13,000, ne- nearly twice as much as they were producing since the start of the summer. Um, and they're about out of coins, right? And they still have a lot of debt. That they need to pay. And I mean, it begs the question we talked about it a little bit last week is some of this pain from the miners going to flow into the lending space? Um, and it might. Some of the major sort of lenders on the, on the books there, NYDIG and uh, B. Riley, which are common amongst a lot of miners as well, not ready to ring that alarm yet, but it's definitely a possibility, Will. Yeah, let's look at the numbers a little bit more in depth. From last month, we saw that Core Scientific mined about 1,200 Bitcoin in September, 40 Bitcoin per day. They often mine in one month what other miners mine in one quarter. And just stealing that from a podcast I actually did earlier today, it's interesting observation. They're just so large compared to other miners. 
Uh, last month, they even added another 410 pentahash to their self-mining operations uh, for about a total of 13 exahash for self-mining. And they sold 1,500 Bitcoin last month for total revenue of $32.2 million. Last month, they also held 1,000 Bitcoin and $29 million in cash for a total liquidity of $49 million. It seems since then that they've liquidated even more of that, and they only hold about 29 Bitcoin, according to some other public disclosures we have. So they, there's not much room for them to go, right? You can continue to mine Bitcoin, but if you can't make your energy payments, then you cannot continue to mine Bitcoin. And right now, according to some other numbers we have, it looks like they have one of the highest mining thresholds out there for in terms of cost per mining Bitcoin. It costs them about $39,000 to mine per Bitcoin. And it's compared to some others out there that are they're around the threshold, but they're still in the green. And that's because they've taken this very debt-heavy approach, right? They've gone to the public markets, they went and IPO'd, uh, they have some debt on their books, and they've purchased machines at expensive rates. They've made some uh, expensive choices with facilities. And I'm sure we're going to see more of this coming into the next few weeks as more of their financials are revealed if they choose to reveal some of those numbers. But it's definitely a tough place to be in. The one thing I do think that we need to look at when we're looking at this core scientific news and just contextualize it is that it's not just core scientific who's in this boat. And a lot of people are looking at core and probably punching down on it because they're yet the next miner in the hot seat. But you know, we can go through the summer and just talk about name after name after name of miners who have over leveraged on debt, thinking that the 0% interest rate regime would continue and that they could just hold on to their Bitcoin. Bitcoin would continue to go up. It didn't pan out. And so that was one strategy that seemingly has not worked. Doesn't mean that Core Scientific is done as a company. In fact, we have so much more to find out before that even proceeds. It seems to be a very different situation than Compute North so far. So we will have to wait. That being said, uh, certainly bad news. I think most people in the industry are cheering for Core Scientific to succeed and restructure out of this uh, well. Last point on this. The optimist in me just wants to say we're getting closer and closer to sort of recovery in Bitcoin markets, right? As the blood gets shed in the mining market and there's less and less Bitcoin to sell um, as companies need to finance their operations and their sort of treasury holdings that they've built up in the past when times were great and they're sort of getting rid of it all, once that sell pressure is removed, that's less volatility to the downside in Bitcoin markets. And hopefully we get to a recovery. Okay. I want to push back on this actually a little bit. Ready for some pushback? I don't know how much miners selling at this point really matters. Miners have sold from May until now. And yes, that's Bitcoin that was previously locked up going to the market. But if you look at the volumes in terms of Bitcoin, it's I don't think it's significant enough to say anything. If Marathon, yes, dumped its 10,000 Bitcoin treasury into the open market in one day, that would significantly hurt the Bitcoin industry, but they wouldn't do that. I think OTC desks are too sophisticated nowadays, and you, you wouldn't see too much price pressure from selling Bitcoin. So I do see that reaction on Twitter quite a lot, that you know there's not that much Bitcoin to sell now since these miners have all capitulated. And yes, historically, miner capitulation with treasuries is a bottom point in every bear market. But I don't think in this instance, those things are too causally connected. Any pushback on that take? I think that's fair when you look at publicly listed miners, right? And that's the transparency that we get to see. Um, and it, and it, like we have to realize now that there's only about 900 coins generated, uh, give or take, depending on transaction fees per day um, to these miners. And so you're right, there's not that much sell pressure that could come on an ongoing basis. But when you think about the tre treasuries of miners and the holdings that could be sold you can't just look at those public listed ones because where the majority of coins that could be hold in treasuries by miners are those old Chinese miners, right? Where the block reward was much, much higher. And I think that there's still quite a bit in private markets, the majority of hash rates from private miners, right? And I still think there's a lot of sort of veteran miners out there that have a lot of coins. Um, and then just generally and you know, geographically, if we look at the world, a lot of coins that we don't necessarily know where they are and who's holding them, but they're also feeling the pain of the of the mining market. More news to come from Core Scientific, I'm sure of that. But from all of us in the industry, we are wishing them the best during this restructuring period. Let's move over to another minor financing story. That is with Maple Finance. Uh, Maple Finance is a lending project for DeFi, but is 
teamed up with another firm called Icebreaker Finance in order to give some dollars to desperate miners. They're trying to allocate about $300 million into this lending pool for miners out there. And right now, they're getting a lot of interest from miners, but they're not getting a lot of interest from lending partners, which isn't a huge shocker. I mean, there's a little interest in there. Uh, Most of the time, how these deals are structured is you either have ASICs or facilities or Bitcoin as collateral on the mining side. You go and get a USD loan based on that. And then there's obviously the counterparty is giving out the money for interest with the collateral being seized if the whole project falls through. These lending teams are not as interested anymore. Why? Well, interest rates have gone up. It's probably better to deploy your money somewhere else. Bitcoin revenues are down. Bitcoin mining revenues are down, rather. And then on top of that, it's become increasingly clear to a lot of lending firms out there that you might be able to seize your collateral, those ASICs, but once you have it, what exactly is the plan with it? So this story is definitely interesting. It's not surprising to see it if you look at how these loans are typically broken down. That being said, there's still a large amount of interest in the mining space for acquiring capital at any interest rate. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that miners are... It's interesting in two different ways, right? It's interesting that miners are so interested because I remember when this pool, uh, this capital pool was first created about a month ago, interest rates are like 20%. It's like super high of a potential return. But from the lending side, it's clear that they have been paying attention to what's happening in the market because there's so many debt restructurings and these like painful negotiation processes and people having to take like like Nidig the other week having to take a bunch of machines, which if you mark to market on what machine prices are, is super low and probably not what they wanted. They probably wanted their cash um, from the miners. So I think what we're seeing is when there's blood in the water there's going to be sharks, right? And so when there is cheap capital assets because the market's turned over like ASICs readily available at really low levels, um, there's going to be funds that come in and try to sweep up and you know lend at really high rates and pick up capital assets and maybe mine themselves. We see uh, have seen Jihan uh, Wu of previous block size war fame come in with, I think, a $250 million fund. CZ at Binance come in with I think a five hundred million dollar fund, and then Grayscale as well. Good old you know Barry Silbert, DCG with their fingers on everything, also back in here. So some of the smartest people that we know in the industry are seeing the opportunity uh, while big, while the mining industry is in a bear market. Definitely, I think an interesting thing in this article from CoinDesk, and the one I'm referencing for it, is that there's some new strings attached with these sort of loans where they don't just want the ASICs, right? They want everything that powers the ASICs. They want the facility, they want the energy contracts, they want the people and the parts in order to keep the mine going. An ASIC at this point is pretty cheap. I, I've seen numbers going as low as like $11, $12 per terahash. It's probably a little lower than most of the market. It's probably a little bit higher. But to be frank, like there are hundreds of thousands of ASICs waiting on shelves and there's still new machines coming out from Bitmain. And Bitmain itself is trying to undercut the secondary market. The secondary market should be cheaper than the primary market in this instance, uh, because the secondary market is going to be used machines. But there's so many machines out there that there's going to be a continued race to the bottom. And so you can't just be a lender out there who just wants to procure ASICs for collateral. You're going to want to have the cash flow on your books as well. You're going to want to have all the associated assets in case you want to liquidate. So this is definitely something to watch. Just more news and interest from capital markets for Bitcoin mining, unless you have. Any more points there? Let's move on to the last topic, which is Block, formerly known as Square, hiring Argo Blockchain's former CTO. This is interesting for a few reasons. The biggest, I think, is that Block continues to pick up new talent. Block has hired Perry Hoffey, who is the former CTO of Argo, as I said, and then also hired Alejandro De La Torre, formerly of Poolin. Uh, they are both now on the mining team at Block. And Block has more LinkedIn postings for additional mining hires. And this comes after you know they're working on their wallet. They're working on a lightning kit. They already have Bitcoin integrated into Cash App. Uh, so they're really becoming like this full service house for Bitcoin. And they're hiring some interesting and notable people to back up that vision. Yeah, I, I love it. Um, I love what Jack Dorsey is doing for the Bitcoin ecosystem. He's he's touching like the builder side and of all angles, right? Uh, LDK is the sort of lightning implementation that he helps fund through Spiral subsidiary of Block. Um, is is you know focused on a sort of a usable version of lightning that 
focuses on, you know, on the experience that developers can have. Um, you know, you mentioned that they're working on a hardware wallet. They also have the sort of Web5 initiative to try to um, sort of bring like applications to the Bitcoin ecosystem um, and now mining. Right. And, and they also have several grants out there sponsoring core developers and reviewers um, in the open source ecosystem that is Bitcoin. You know, Jack Dorsey could potentially have a major impact on Bitcoin. And I love to see it. I hope that he's successful and you know gets credit in the process. Love it. Continuing the vision. Well, we only got three stories for everyone this week. Keep them short, but that's all we got. Matt, have a good weekend. Cheers.